I would say that now Washington is firmly under the control of Israel and its supporters in the United States. Absolutely. Yeah. To the point where support for the Israelis at this stage is effectively unconditional. So that's a big change. But I'm not an Israeli, but I am an American. And I think first and foremost about the United States, and I, I'll be frank with you, I'm very worried about our position mm -hmm. in the region and in the world. Yeah. Because everyone knows that we ultimately hold all the cards when it comes to Israel. Today, Mr. Netanyahu has far more influence and control over what happens in Washington than President Biden. This is Colonel Douglas McGregor, a 28-year veteran of the U.S. Army who previously served as the senior advisor to the U.S. Secretary of Defense. Colonel McGregor is an excellent insider to the complex geopolitical events around the world. And I think as a result, uh, Mr. Netanyahu decided that this is a good time to strike at Gaza. The attack from Gaza essentially handed him an opportunity on a silver platter. Right. And we're beginning to find out that, yes, it was a terrible attack and terrible things were done, but not quite as, as it was originally described. That's right. You know, 40 babies didn't have their heads chopped off. Everyone wasn't raped and so forth. So on. now we're finding that it was a lot of friendly fire where inexperienced Israeli soldiers opened fire and, and accidentally killed Israeli citizens. That's a problem when you haven't seen a lot of action for a long time and you've acted yeah. largely as a policeman, not yeah. as a soldier. But the point is that he said, look, you know, we're never going to get along with these people. Hamas is committed to our destruction, so we'll destroy them. Right. And you, you, just, you know from the beginning that you're never going to get all of those Hamas fighters right? because they're a school of fish swimming in an ocean. So how do you get at the, at the fish that you really want? You drain right. the ocean. Mm. They're draining the ocean in Gaza. They are hurting, forcing, pushing, use whatever terminology you want, the population out of Gaza. And they are utterly destroying the infrastructure, the houses, and the buildings, making it very clear to the population being driven out, you can't come back. There's nothing to come back to. Right. The only thing I can, I can find that is uh, in the modern era that approximates this was the German response to the Warsaw Uprising in uh, 1944 between 1 August and 1 September. And the uh, Germans went into the old city and crushed the opposition and effectively drove the population out. Long columns of thousands of Poles marching out of Warsaw. Uh, they killed as many of the opposition as they could. And what was left when it surrendered went to concentration camps. And that was the end of it. Yeah. Uh, Poland did not recover from that because when the Soviets arrived, they were actually very happy that whatever resistance to their arrival in government had been eliminated for them by the Nazis. But that's as close as I can come. And it worked. The Germans were successful. Now, it didn't do much for Germany. As I said, the principal beneficiaries were the communists. Now we're talking about something in Gaza and the view in Israel is that the population is incorrigible. Yeah. We, we can't reform it. We can't change it. We can't improve. It doesn't make any difference what we do. Therefore, it has to leave because unless they're gone, Hamas is there. And unless Hamas and the population is gone, we will never be safe. It's not an unreasonable position to take, except that we live in the 21st century. Right. Things can't be concealed. Yeah, Things exactly. No one ever saw until the war was over. At least they saw the effects of it are now visible almost instantaneously. Right. The world in the Middle East has changed. You know, in the last 50 years, countries that were much less capable, much less technologically sophisticated are now actually very sophisticated. Right. I include Iran, Turkey, even Jordan, Egypt, Saudi Arabia, the Emirates. Uh, everyone can watch, everyone can see, and everyone is enraged. And so the question is that has to be asked of Mr. Netanyahu is, can you kill your way out of this? Hmm. I think the answer is no. The time to do that is run out as it is. And then you have to ask, well, can Hamas under any circumstances ever live in peace with Israel? I think the answer to that is probably not. Right. In fact, the answer now is, can the whole region tolerate Israel after what's been happening? After seeing over what, 12, 10, 12,000 people killed, 4,500 children, uh, you know, on and on and on. The entire region has to become involved, as do the great powers, to stop this. And if this does not happen, we will get a regional conflict that has global ramifications. Well, this is something that could eventually reach us and do a lot of damage here in the United States. So I think 
Congress has abdicated its responsibility because it's a fugitive from accountability. <laughs> and they're not paying attention, really, in my judgment, to what's happening. Instead, what they're being told is, well, again, we have to stand by Israel. Israel has no formal treaty of alliance with us. Is it in our interest to bankroll unconditionally the expulsion of millions of people from their homes in order to create a new Jewish megastate from Jordan to the Mediterranean? Right. I don't think that's in our interest.